Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk about the content you need to know in order to absolutely crush the NPT. So as you know, over here at PT Final Exam, we are firm believers that you've got to know the content. You've got to be able to not just recognize the content, but actually problem solve with it on test day. And so that's why as we go through these podcast episodes, that we're trying to help you see the content and also the ways that it could be asked on test day. So that's why we want to spend a lot of time on practice questions. And today's no different. We'll be talking through a practice question related to the non-systems on the NPTE. But as we get started, just a reminder that we are we have classes ongoing. We are in the middle of our VIP class. You're certainly welcome to join anytime you wish. That VIP class is a great way to get your questions answered. If you enjoy studying in a small group in an organized way, that is the very best way to, to just, just rock the NPTE. If you're looking for a faster paced course right before test day, we do run a crash course three weeks before every test day. This is, this is our most popular product. We get to spend a lot of time going through cardiomuscular and neuro one more time. Again, it's a great way to just blast through the content. And we do have discounts for groups of five or more. So if you want to grab your PT cohort together, we can get you a pretty sweet discount if you get groups of five or more together. Just email over at ptfinalexam.com slash contact, and you can reach out to us to get your discount. All right, let's go ahead and get started with today. Our uh, question here, talking about the non-systems, as you recall, on the test day, or on the exam, you can expect somewhere between five and six questions related to the non-systems equipment devices and technologies. Now, this is obviously not a very large section. The non-systems is kind of a painful section only because it covers such a variety of topics. And so in this case, we're talking about equipment devices and technologies, somewhere between five and six questions related to this section on the test. So let's go ahead and get started with our practice question. As per our usual, I will read the question to you, give you a moment to formulate your response. We'll talk about the answers and then give you some tips to remember this for test day. Here we go. A patient that is wheelchair dependent is being examined by a physical therapist. During the examination, the therapist notes an area of non-blanchable erythema in bilateral popliteal fossae. Which of the following wheelchair modifications would most likely aid in preventing integumentary damage? So again, the patient's wheelchair dependent being examined by a PT. During the examination, the therapist notes an area of non-blanchable erythema in bilateral popliteal fossae. Which of the following wheelchair modifications would most likely aid in preventing integumentary damage? Option one, increase seat depth two inches. Two, decrease seat depth two inches. Three, increase seat height two inches. And four, decrease seat height two inches. So kind of a mix and match question here. Increasing the seat depth or decreasing the seat depth or increasing the seat height or decreasing the seat height, which one of these is most likely to reduce the or prevent the integumentary damage that's occurring in the in bilateral popliteal fossae? So the correct answer here on this one is you want to decrease the seat depth by two inches because clearly we're having contact with the popliteal fossa on both say a bilateral popliteal fossae. I think that's how you say the plural of fossa is the fossae. F-O-S-S-A-E. So to decrease the seat depth, what that's going to, going to do is give a little bit more space at the back of the knee. So as you imagine, again, maybe a little bit difficult, those of you who are, are just listening to this, but if I were to draw this out, you would note that, let me see if I can get my stylus. Again, this is a good reason to go check out the PT Final Exam uh, YouTube channel. This is where we'll have this posted. But if we were to try to draw this out, so a wheelchair looks something like this. So again, a very rudimentary wheelchair. But as your patient is sitting in the wheelchair, you want to have some space between the front edge of the wheelchair seat and the back side of the knees. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. If you have a seat that is too long, so the seat depth being too deep, then what'll happen is that usually the patient has to slouch in order to reach the edge of the seat and they'll get excessive contact in the popliteal fossae. So in order to mediate or to remedy this, you're going to shorten the seat depth by a little bit. And again, docking the general you as a healthcare team, you'll recommend that the seat depth be reduced by two inches so as to prevent contact with the front edge of the wheelchair seat. So the other option, increasing or decreasing seat height, that's more related to uh, 
clearing the feet of from the floor. So as you consider where a patient is, uh, as they're sitting in the wheelchair, you want to make sure their feet are are not running into the floor. So typically you measure the from the popliteal fossa down to the bottom of the heel. So in a sense, you're measuring the it's not just the tibia, but like you're measuring the foreleg or the tibia length and then adding two inches to that so that the seat height is sufficient so they can clear obstacles as they go driving. So the seat height only mildly related. It's mostly related to uh, just being able to clear the floor. Although I did see a question once about seat height. So log this away in your memory banks. I did see one about seat height. If someone has had a one-sided stroke, so a unilateral or hemiplegic stroke, where they have one side that is affected, but one side that's unaffected, typically those types of wheelchairs, you lower the seat height so that they can more easily reach the floor with their sound or well leg. So think of it that way. If you want to improve or increase their ability to propel the wheelchair, you will reduce the seat height so they can reach the floor just a little bit easier. And that would be in the case of a unilateral CVA. That's where you'd see something related to the seat height. So in this case, in this, case, in this question, we're talking about the seat depth, that uh, you want to decrease the seat depth so you can l eliminate the pressure on the backside of the knees from the front edge of the chair. So with that, we'll go ahead and bring today to a conclusion. Again, I hope you check out the other episodes that we've got over here on the NPT podcast. Again, trying to push out new content over on our YouTube channel as well. Check that out, youtube.com slash PT Final Exam. And you can find us really anywhere you listen or watch podcasts, listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos, any of the social medias, you can find us there. Be sure to check it out. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, leave us a five-star review, and I will catch you in the next episode. Thanks, Will Crane fist pumps all around.